How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Well, I'm back in my shop. Finally. We were gone for uh, almost three weeks. And uh, long trip, uh, 4,400 miles we drove. Plus, I flew from uh, Great Falls, Montana to Chicago and then drove to Streeter, Illinois. Uh, as I released a video on that on Mr. Pete's meet and greet. That was a great event. The, him and his family did a wonderful job of putting it on. A lot of people were worried that he wasn't organized. Well, they were very organized actually. And uh, they did a fantastic job. Uh, Mr. Pete is, uh, and his wife, Jeanette, and uh, his uh, daughter and uh, son-in-law who live right next door. And so they did a, they did a fantastic job. Uh, as a a lot more people showed up, of course, than, uh, than Mr. Pete expected. Uh, you know, there were a lot of numbers thrown around, but it was really around 250. And because uh, some people didn't get counted and all this stuff. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but it, it was just a, a great event and fun time. Uh, I got to stay with Mr. Pete, uh, and uh, he was very gracious. Uh, him and his wife, uh, Jeanette, just fantastic people. And uh, I just enjoyed that so much. Had a lot of quality time with Lyle, and we uh, talked about a lot of things, a lot about YouTube stuff and just shop stuff, just fun times. Just It was just great. Uh, I'd love to go back out and see him again sometime. Uh, or get him to come out here even. I know he doesn't like to travel and, and all that, but I'd like to call him to come out here to California and maybe we could do something out here and people out here then could get to meet him and stuff. It'd be fun. Anyway, I'm back in the shop. Um, I, um, let's see, where should I start? Uh, so I made a video about the pipe threading on the lathe and I completed that and I welded it up and everything. Well, I did make a mistake and I made a mistake in my calculations and I don't know exactly why I did, but I think I was maybe in too much of a hurry. And uh, so I've sat down and went through everything again. Now, several people commented on this and I, I was off and I set twice the angle on my lathe when I cut the cut the taper and threads. I, all, I mean, all was, all how I did it uh, was all proper. It's just the angle I set wrong. Uh, so I'm gonna, I have to fix this on my gas accumulation chamber. And I, even though I think the threads would still work and seal because of the low pressure, uh, but I wanna make it right. So I've got my, the tube back, I came up with a fix, what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make new new uh, ends or rebuild the whole thing. I'm going to machine, there's enough material, I'm going to machine out the bores, or the, thre old, the threads I cut. I'm going to put a, make a stainless steel insert, press it in and weld it in, and then recut the threads uh, properly. So we're going to go through all that. Um, and that's it. I'm also going to show you the math. I sat down and I made a CAD model of it and everything, but I'm going to uh, I'll make a, I'm going to do it on paper and just show you uh, the uh, proper calculations for it. I want to thank the people that commented and explained where I made my mistake, and uh, that was extremely helpful. And I see how I I made my mistake. So. You know, it, things happen. You know, we all make mistakes sometimes. But there was a few other things that I should have caught that would have told me I made my mistakes. I think I even mentioned it in the video where I said, oh, why is my taper attachment set at like two times the angle? You know, and when you look down, it's almost at three and a half. Well, that's it's two times the angle. And I should have I should have stopped right then and rethought what I what I had set up. Uh, but no, I just kept going. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, but I want to explain to, about it. Uh, and uh, but we're going to go to the machining right this minute. Uh, how I have this set up? I've already bored one end out. We're going to bore the other end out 
and then I will make two inserts. We'll put them in and weld them in and then we'll recut the threads and do it properly. But, uh, you know, I didn't, maybe I didn't get back to every comments, every comment on that video or anything, but, uh, cause I was away at the time. Uh, um, but I do want to thank again, everybody who did comment about how I didn't make a mistake. There was a few people and they, and they did very, very polite about saying you screwed up, Randy. So <laughs> that's, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm glad they said something. Anyway, so uh, let's go and uh, machine some of this stuff and uh, get this uh, wrapped up. Uh, I have the uh, one thing also on the generator project, so we'll get the gas line done. And then they, I received the wrong uh, transfer panel, automatic bus transfer panel. Uh, they delivered when they delivered it. They delivered the 100 amp one, and it's supposed to be a 200 amp panel. Uh, so I just got that, uh, though, Monday, I think. Monday, that, the, the bright one came and, and picked up, they took away the other one. So uh, we can get going on this project complete. And uh, But first we're going to fix the gas line thing, and then we'll be jumping in and getting the, panel, the new panel uh, mounted out there and wired. So uh, thanks, you guys. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get uh, a lot more shop time here. I've been trying to catch up on things here at the house. Uh, got most of my firewood. All the stuff I had here, I got it all cut up, split, and my wife did a wonderful job of stacking it. Um, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have saw a couple pictures of that, and uh, she, uh, she wanted to stack it, so she likes stacking it. She's a great help. And... Uh, so she did all that, and uh, I just went this morning, though, and cut some more logs and skidded them over so I can get a little more firewood just so we have a good buffer. We have about eight and a half cords. Uh, uh, we burn easy six cords usually on a regular winter, and but I like to have a little more of a buffer just in case you have a long, wet winter and things like that. So if I can get, I should end up with about 10 cords easy, and uh, we'll be fine. Lots of firewood around. I just skidded logs off my neighbor's property, and that uh, so we have plenty. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's do some uh, real machine work here and get on with it. Got the tube in. Got the far end. We're just riding on. We're just grabbing on the machined end that we welded in. And my chuck is already dialed in, uh, very concentric, uh, within a few tenths, and. Uh, so it's nice uh, being able to just be able to grab something and know it's on center, especially a machine surface. So that's what we did here. And I did check it with an indicator and it's just fine within a few tenths. This end, I, I have my steady rest just riding on the machine surface of the end. And evidently this, that, this far end is better than this end. Uh, this one might have gotten a little bit crooked for some reason shouldn't have but it it is uh so the the faces are a little bit of movement in them but that's minor it won't matter with what we're doing so we're going to go in and machine out the thread 1.3 will be the diameter and how i was able to reach in using this i just set this up like so and just reach in there just to ride on that machine surface with the beam here and be able to turn that by hand and we're in then oh half a thousands yeah just about a half a thousands so that that's kind of pretty nice and just being able to reach in there and get that now we'll go in and we'll Come in with a. Uh, this is a uh, three eighths, three quarter. See, it's, I don't know. Uh, let's see, a three quarter, five eighths. I remember. <laughs> five eighths. This is a five eighths uh, solid carbide boring bar with a CCMT insert in it. 
so that will cut those uh, threads right out of there pretty nice on the stainless. And we're running about 350 RPM, not doing it real fast. Uh, because of the cutting the threads out, it can get kind of rough on things. So we'll just take it easy, slow feed, and get rid of those threads. And open it up to 1.3 inches. All right, well, we, I did the threads real quick. Uh, it's just, uh, it's boring. And it's kind of boring. So uh, we need to have about 94,000, so 100 and... About almost 190 thousandths to remove total, uh, 94 on the radius or so, and uh, we'll uh, we'll just start boring that out. And uh, we'll chamfer the outside and the, and I'll clean up that inside edge a little bit. But chamfer this out here so we can weld it out here. All right, we're gonna take this out. All we're gonna do is loosen this. This thing flips up. Now it's full of chips, of course, and uh, I'm gonna get those out. This is inch and a half, uh, 316 stainless. And I, I forgot to turn the camera on, of course. <laughs> anyway, I drilled, I faced it, and I drilled a hole, about 3 eighths hole in there, pilot hole, and then I'm gonna drill a 3 quarter hole in there, and then, and then I'll turn the uh, outside to rough dimension, and then I'll bore it. The rough dimension, then I'll finish, turn the outside, and part it off. It'll look like this in the end. This is the first one. Uh, shooting for about one and a half thousandths uh, press fit on it. Now that was terrible. All right, so back down to what I was cutting it or at before, 350, and not a super aggressive feed rate, but this stuff's very hard to get to break, so yeah, you end up with stringy chips.
All right, we're out of money, 880. Um, we're, that's just rough. Uh, then we have enough meat there to cut our taper. So I'm gonna do the taper after we get this in and welded, and then we'll cut the threads. Why am I doing it that way? So I eliminate any distortion that I would get from pressing and the heat from the welding. Uh, so we'll do it. We'll do all the taper boring and the threads after we have it all in place. All right, we got it in the press. We have uh, now this. This here. These are pretty slick little adapters uh, from Tim Barn Time. Um, uh, you got to check his channel out now. I'll put a link I think in there if I remember but We're gonna put that in there. That's mr. Pragmatic Lee by the way just uh, I had I, I, I put his lo I engraved his logo <laughs> In there so I would remember but It just has a couple magnets in it. He's made these on his videos a Couple magnets snap it on works slick as can be I don't need to warm it up at all, so we'll, uh, I'm just going to press this one in. Well, as in my previous video, this is the same setup that I'm doing, uh, but with a different number. Actually, it's half of what I showed before, roughly. It's uh, 93 thousandths 93, is what we're looking for, travel, and I'm, I'm using three inches. So, it's 31 thousandths per inch. It comes out for... 1.7833 degrees and when I check my uh, scale on the taper attachment this is the scale you can see there's a line right here on the adjustable part of the taper attachment and then there's already a scribed line here at about one and a half degrees each one of these marks is one degree and you can see it's even though you're at an angle here, it's just actually about halfway between those two marks, the one and a half and and the number two degree mark. So uh, we know a double check here. So we know we're at the right angle now. Uh, so I'll just reiterate what I've done. So I just I get the backlash out. I am setting my scale on the ways. To zero uh, I'll set my dial indicator here to zero and I'm going to move it three inches three inches and I have 90 I'm um, 93 and a half thousands uh, each time I've done it and that has to do with the tightness of the Gibbs I think uh, in my cross slide I have them set a little bit snug so that there's no play uh, and each time I've done this I'm within a half a thousandth of 93 so I'm okay with that and uh, that's about it really <laughs> uh, it was uh, so this is set here in this position to give me the travel now I'm once I get set up here with the work in the lathe, I might have to loosen this and adjust the slide so we're in a, in a good range. And I'll be turning my compound uh, to a, an angle so that I can adjust my depth of cut with the compound because your cross slide is no more operative. We're, we're back with the same setup. The tube is mounted in the chuck. And then I dial indicated the end in, and I've adjusted the cross slide position uh, by loosening this a little bit. 
and pushing the cross slide back and then retightening so I have enough range uh, uh, with this with the compound cranked all the way in uh, is how I adjusted it so I would clear and now I can bring it back and adjust my depth of cut just like that so we're ready to uh, start taking some cuts I just did one cut and I did I only took three thousandths uh, roughly depth of cut and I'm about three quarters I can feel about three quarters of a I took a cut about three quarters of the depth uh, with just a few thousandths so it, that tells me it's a real shallow angle which it is I'm just going to be measuring this with with a caliper uh, just catching the outside edge it just has to be close. Uh, yeah. Even in the books, they'll tell you that the tolerances are kind of loose on this. So I'm at 901.901 right now. And I'm shooting for 0 0.956, 957. <laughs> So that cut brought took it all away the full depth. Now I only had went seven thousandths on the compound and now it's at 30 degrees of course but um, I went from 901 to 936. 937 out there. Nine fifty-seven, right on the money. Okay, that's all I'm gonna cut. A nice, really nice finish. I got my threading tool in here and I've checked my clearance. I have to go an inch uh, to cut threads all the way through. So that's why, uh, that's why this tool is still sticking out a long ways. So we've done that and I've come up and I've touched. And we're set for 14 threads per inch. Now I'm going to be doing this really slow. Um, I'm doing back gear here so... 175 RPM roughly. Uh, it's because I'm so much out. I'm going to take really light cuts. It's going to take me a while. So we'll do a couple and then uh, I'll just finish you up on it. Uh, it's, it's a very slow, it's going to be a slow process here, especially with a stainless. It's very tough and uh, well, it's just the way it is, right?
Alright, enough here. I'm just going to leave the half nut engaged and just use the turn the lathe on and off basically here. Alright, I think we're there. We want about three and a half to four turns. And so I'm just going to thread that in and then count them on the way out. Mark it and count them on the way out for a hand tight. And uh, see how we are. three and a half. I think we're good. We're gonna call it good. Uh, my weld on here, I mean it's a good weld. Actually it came out really well for me. And uh, But I'm gonna I'm gonna face it anyway just to make it really look nice. Make your own. Exact measurements.
but we got the gas line hooked up all three quarter inch up to here and then uh, this flex line came with the generator it's half inch right here and uh, we're good to go my gas accumulator t is there and uh, yeah power uh, we'll do the power next week uh, I got to wrangle up wiring conduit things like that but uh, we'll get all that going next week and hopefully get that transfer panel in that's the plan at least and then we'll uh, get the thing running see you guys in the next one